Anytime I get a chance to fly or to you know, get on a plane, one of the things that I've always wondered about is the physics of flying. Birds over time, over the evolutionary period of time, have mastered the art of flying. So the basic idea in physics that underlines flying is essentially fluid dynamics. And there are just very basic principles that underlies the fluid dynamics. And one of the most important things is to be able to take off, be airborne, and be able to maintain motion. And all of these are actually governed by some very basic principles in physics. There are three things that I'm going to cover in this that might help us cover the basics of what flying and how that gets related to the birds and how they fly. And because that is mainly what we, we want to kind of understand here. The basic principle, as I mentioned, is in fluid dynamics. And in physics, when we talk about fluids, it's not only liquids. So air, for example, is a fluid. And the way we think about this in terms of why, in general, air categorized as fluids is the nature of flow. The deformation that occurs in the fluid just depends on how fast the object will move through the fluid. So think of the bird flying in the air. So air being the fluid, and how the deformation, the force that is exerted on the air particles is dependent on how fast the bird flew in the, in the air. The same way, think about the fishes swimming in, in water. In fact, fishes in water, swimming in water, is essentially a form of flying. The only difference is that the density of the water is much higher than that of, that of the air. And so we think of swimming differently from what will happen when we actually fly. But they are actually the basis of it from a physics point of view can be described by the same basic principles. So, that, so what are these three things that we need to keep in mind as we think of flying? So the first one is the drag. We have the lift and we have the thrust. So these three things play a very important role in, in flying. And they are also related to the, some properties of the fluid that the object is in. So the first one, drag, is actually a reactionary force. Whenever an object is in motion, relative motion to the fluid, the, the force that is generated that opposes the motion of the, uh, of the object or opposes the motion of the bear becomes the drag. Now, a way to think about it is this, is that when I move my hand in the air, how slowly I do it and what I feel the air pushing against me versus if I do it very fast, Again, that goes back to that basic idea that how fast the object moves is dependent on the deformation that the fluid will experience. So drag is very important in maintaining the flight. Now, another important thing, which, in fact, for, for all of us who have had the experience of getting on an aircraft, the aircraft is about to take off. One of the things that, which is really a very uh, pivotal moment of that aircraft to, to really take off from the ground is that we need runways. Aircrafts would need runways. And the reason being that it needs the force that will lift it up. So in order for that, birds don't need that because over time, they have learned to conquer the environment and have the strength to be able to take off with very little horizontal motion on the floor. But again, think of the, our mechanical object, the aircraft that has been designed, all the engineering, the science going into that. But the main thing is that it needs that initial force to be able to give it that lift. So what is the lift? 
So the lift is essentially the force that actually take, enables the object to be able to get off the ground. And it is supported, it's the same lift that sort of suspends the object in the air. So that keeps it airborne. Now, once it gets airborne, other things have to kick in in order to maintain it. But for now, let's think another way to think about a lift related to what happens when, you, when you're swimming, when you get into water, right? So you feel that weightlessness, and you feel that there is a force that always gives you that bounce up. That is kind of what we're calling the lift here. So in a way, the lift is analogous to what we will call the, the buoyant force, as we will, we will experience in, in water. The third one is the thrust, and the thrust is needed in order to keep us going. Okay, now there are some very important relationships between these three forces. Now, one, the drag always opposes the thrust. The thrust is what keeps it in motion, what keeps it going forward. So now, the thrust, which keeps it going, and the drag are opposing forces. Now, another important force, because all these things are taking place under gra the gravitational field, right? So the weight of the bird also kicks in. This, all these forces, especially these three forces, the drag, the lift, and the thrust, they have to be in a delicate balance. So now, just imagine all these little birds. Over years, over the, their evolutionary period, they have been able to master how to manipulate with these three forces and be able to, at a, at a moment notice, they take off, they're airborne, is able to get the enough uh, lift, get on. So how does it keep going? So now it needs its wings, so now you have to flap the wings. But the, the, the interesting thing is that the, the trust that it needs, if it needs to accelerate, it has to make sure that the thrust is now greater than the drag. That's very important. But the drag it is also related to how fast it goes. So the higher the speed of the bird, the higher the, the drag is going to be. The other thing is that the, the wingspan of the bird also influences the drag. So, but the, the good thing is that not so much of it doesn't really affect the, uh, the trust, okay? So what then affects the trust more is the profile. So you can think of it in terms of the number eight, but look at it from the side that way. So it's streaming through. So the more aerodynamic the bird looks, the shape of it. And that goes back to another fluid dynamics concept that in order to avoid irregular flow of fluids around an object that it moves through, it must be streamlined. So streamlining, or a, what we call a laminar flow, is essentially the, uh, a concept that describes the regular flow of, or relative flow of fluids around objects. Now, when we get to a turbulent situation, then we have we get to the point where there is an irregular flow, and we all experience that in aircraft where uh, we all kind of wonder, hey, what's going on? Now, so in the world of the bird, again, it's been able over time, has mastered all that, and understand where there is turbulence, how to avoid that. But it doesn't mean that the birds do not experience that, because there are at times weather conditions will change that may cause the fluid dynamics, the relative flow, changes. So the winds will have to flap. So I'm going to make a motion here with my arms here stretch out. So it's not the flapping this way that actually create the trust that a bird needs in order to make the trust greater than the drag. It is more of the tip of the wings flapping. That is what a bird needs in order to keep it up and to keep it going and to make that trust greater than the drag. That is how the bird would accelerate. That is how it will increase its, its speed. Okay, what about if the, it wants to just maintain a constant speed? 
then he has to make sure that he can either make sure this keeps constant and regulate it to a point that that flipping of the, of the wing tips is such that the, the drag is, is now equal to the thrust. So there is no residual force that will push it forward, that will give it acceleration. How does the birds do this? Somehow evolution have taught them over the years that by manipulating with their, their wings, their tail and all that, they are able to maintain that constant speed. So how does it maintain that force that keeps it up, that keeps it airborne? Okay. Again, the wings do the same thing, right? Depending on how the angle at which it, it tends to take the wings, that will keep it airborne. Think about what happens when you, you, you are on a, on a flight, right? One of the things that you will notice is that whenever the, the plane, the aircraft, as it is ascending, you notice that it does its wings this way, and then you realize before you know it, you are about 30,000 feet in the air. Anytime I, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to take a, a, a flight, one of the highlights for me is to watch the plane as they flip, the flaps. The movement of these flaps is very analogous to what the birds do. So again, they flip those things on the, on the wing, right? Some of them are much closer to the body of the aircraft. Some of them are a little further away. So depending on which one is open up, that lowers the height. The ones that are closer will create more drag, and so eventually the, the aircraft lands and it comes to a halt. Birds do exactly the same thing. Okay, so the different part, the angle at which they tend their, uh, they tend their wings, their wingspan, they lower it, they flap it a little bit, they lower it, they flap it a little bit, they lower it, and gently they come to land. So what the birds are doing is what? They are manipulating the physics that governs the objects, how they fly, how they will move in a fluid. They've mastered that to the point that they are able to take off, keep airborne, and be able to either have a constantly changing speed, flight, or maintain the same speed. So in a way, we think about it this way, that the bird motion is really more of physics. Now, in fact, there's a joke that I always make with, with, with my students that it is all in the physics, whichever way you look at it. It is all in the physics. The, the, the bird develop not knowing all the, the, uh, uh, the complexities that comes with it, but with time, it's able to evolve around that. Its wings, its muscles are able to develop, to be able to, to fly without any, uh, any problems. To, uh, to recap the, the, the main points that I have made here, there are a lot of complexities in terms of the physics, the biology, or the, the structure of the bird itself. All these things have to be considered, in fact, when we talk about the fluid dynamics. I'm only looking at the physics part. So, those three things, balancing well, will keep a bird in motion. So that is the physics, the basics of the physics of, of all of this. The, there are a little bit more complexities here and there, depending on weather conditions and all of that. But the basic idea is for us to recognize that when they fly, there are the mechanisms that they are using, the principles that they are applying lies more with physics than anything else. Whenever you get a chance, you get in an aircraft, try and sit on a window, especially, on the, on, especially where the wing is, and just observe the mechanics 